once Ben Foster said, you know, I'm doing it, I said, hey, we have to try Michael Caine. And Cassian said, no, 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 come on. I've done 100 movies, and my dream was to do a movie with Michael Caine. And I said, no, 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 no. I wrote it for Michael Caine. I have to give it to him. And I get a here, no. But I just like give it, yeah. gotta give it to him. So we gave it to him. And I was at my cottage, which is like, you know, 100 kilometers from Prague. And suddenly somebody was calling and it was unknown number. And I answered it and he said, hello, it's Michael Caine here. And you've got lovely script. And I, I'm looking forward to work with you. And I was like, I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't say anything. I was just like, I, uh, what I should say. And he said, okay, so see you in Prague. And um, and then I, I went down. I told it to my family. And we were like, ah, shouting like crazy. So I'm very excited to to moderate tonight's conversation with writer, producer, director. Peter Jackal. This is a this is a great moment. I'm never going to forget this moment. <laughs> uh, so so first of all, like just before we get into just just how the movie really came together, like why why was this such a, a passion project for you? What was it so so personal, so important for you? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> good to have you here. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching it. And yeah, I mean, just, you know, Jan Zizka is, uh, you know, really big hero, Czech hero. And I come from the Czech Republic. And uh, we learn about him at school. And you actually know about him when you are before the school or, you know, and we've got huge statues in you know in Prague we've got uh, we named areas of of you know our cities he set up some of our cities and you know so he's really one of top 5 you know uh, known uh, uh, and one of one basically one hero you know just like who was you know never defeated and uh, i always wanted to do a movie similar like Braveheart or Gladiator or this kind of, you know, movie. And, and I, I just, I just uh, got, you know, some people came to me 11 years ago with a script which was, you know, written about, the, you know, young Jan Zizka because he was actually famous, the most famous when he was older. And, you know, and I said, oh my God, this is a great idea to do a movie about young Jan Zizka. And, but the script, you know, I didn't use the script and I, I started to work on another different scripts about Jan Zizka. And uh, yeah, and just like it started like that. Wow. So 11 years ago is when it started. So when you got to the point where you were, you were working on the screenplay, like uh, uh, how long did that process take just to kind of get the screenplay into filming shape? Uh, we were shooting in 2018, September. Uh, we had 56 shooting days. And uh, before, you know, actually all those, you know, it was kind of like seven years. But uh, like first year, uh, we hired a writer and we wrote the script in, in Czech. He wrote the script in Czech. Uh, but then I decided to do it in English because what I wanted to do, I'm a big patriot, you know, and I wanted to show everybody how beautiful is Czech country, you know, and uh, show Charles Bridge in Prague and uh, just like all, all those castles. And so I decided to do it in English. And I, I, I needed bigger budget, you know, and, you know, the, the movie by itself, you know, it was uh, close to 20 million dollars which is not that much for this kind of movie you know <laughs> and uh, so you know uh, but because I you know uh, found all those castles and places and by the way just like as you saw you know we never use same location twice it's which is unbelievable and this was like when I fi finished the writing you know I was like oh my god you are absolutely insane <laughs> And I said it to myself uh, as a producer, 
It's just like now you gotta find money for this, you know, and just like do it. it it's gonna be super difficult. And then you know, just like after the first year, when you know, just like we decided to to do it in English, I hired you know uh, an American writer, and then you know again, and I they started from scratch, you know, again. And then uh, I I didn't like that, so I was rewriting it with somebody else, and I didn't like even that. So <laughs> it was like four different scripts which I throw away uh -huh. before I started to write this one. <laughs> so it was like you know hundreds of different drafts, you know, and uh, yeah. And then I decided to do it on my own because I felt like you know uh, I know how I'd like to do it. And uh, yeah, and I started the, the research about the history, and I tried it to use as much as possible from the history, and whatever was, you know, like uh, all the politics, uh, all what we knew about Jan Zizka. And then, of course, I had to create some characters, like, you know, like Michael Caine's character, or the, the Catherine, uh, you know, uh, Sophie Lowe's character. And yeah, just like to make it work for two hours, and just get all the important stuff which are important for us as Czech people, but uh, that you know you would understand. I hope. Uh, well, I, absolutely, and and you know, you mentioned you mentioned Gladiator, and you mentioned uh, uh, Braveheart. Uh, you know, I definitely felt the Braveheart like immediately, and and like I was about a half hour into the film, and I said, this feels very Ridley Scott. I mean, he's done you know few movies that that are on this epic scale. How much did did Ridley Scott in particular inspire your vision for Medieval? Uh, yeah, I mean, just like, you know, all these movies were like, they inspired me. But uh, Ridley Scott, you know, I just like, I was like, uh, when I, uh, I started as a judo guy, I did judo for, you know, 20 years, up to my, when I was 27. Uh, uh, and I had uh, I had an injury before Olympic Games, but you know, and they told me that I'm gonna end up on a wheelchair if I don't stop immediately. And I I just like I didn't, and I uh, but I nominated myself to the Olympic Games, and I went to Sydney in 2000, you know. And then I of course I had to stop because you know I just like my back hurts till now, <laughs> but it was worth it. And at that time. I was I was a stuntman on several projects which which were sh shot in Prague, which was Triple X. I had also some small part there, like a like one of those villains, you know. And Vin Diesel kills me there, and I super enjoyed it. And <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, and I during that time, you know, uh, we were also shooting uh, with Luc Besson uh, film uh, Jean of Arc. And starring Mila Jovovich, his wife at that time, and uh, you know he told me just like you know there was some action you know I was you know hitting somebody with a, a, a sword you know and uh, Luke was uh, in a crowd and you know I, I was just like beating somebody and I he fell down and I was above him and like just like hitting next to the camera. I was like, yeah, 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 I, mean, I love it. I'm gonna help you. And he's, I said, well, how you wanna help me? And he said, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna, uh, if you learn English, because I didn't speak English at all, I just a little bit, you know, just a couple of words. And, you know, he said, yeah, yeah, I mean, if you learn English, you know, I'm gonna help you. So I started to learn English. And then uh, he called me, and it was, it was 1999, and he said, "Like, hey, uh, um, I I see you, you know, you've learned English, uh, so uh, come to London. Uh, you're gonna meet uh, Ridley Scott, uh, and he is, you know, he might have some part in his, you know, next movie. My wife Milevich is going to introduce you to him. You know, it's a Gladiator." <laughs> and I said, good, good, good. And I, I didn't know what, what, what was Gladiator yet. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, oh my God, Ridley Scott, Ridley Scott. It's, and I said, and when, when is it? And he said, like, some date. And I said, oh, I can't. I can go. I can go. I've got um, world championships in judo. <laughs> and I was training for that for so, for so long and that I cannot go. So I couldn't go. And but and he got pissed because you know just like oh you're not going you're really not going I said I, I'm sorry I just oh, wow. can't go, 
and yeah but he gave me a chance later on you know and just like he he he, he brought me to to paris you know I did, it was fine yeah but it's just like it really i missed really scott because of this oh, because man. of judo wow <laughs> Wow, well, that's a, quite a story. Uh, so, I mean, listen, the cast of this movie is fantastic. I mean, Michael Caine, Ben Foster, who like is phenomenal in in everything. Sophie Lowe, Matthew Good, uh, Till, Till is awesome. How did you uh, cast this film? How did you get this great cast? Uh, yeah, the, that was probably uh, the hardest part of everything. You know, I, I had I had a script, I had money. Uh, we were shooting in in Prague, you know, which is beautiful. I, I think it also helped, you know, like uh, some people, you know, want to shoot, you know, uh, in Prague because it's just like uh, it's got really nice atmosphere. And yeah, and I couldn't cast the, the main role, you know, I was just, you know, it's, it's tough because, you know, people's schedule, you know, and uh, with these stars, you know, they've got 10 same offers on a table uh, for same money with much more known or known directors, you know, <laughs> and uh, or producers. Uh, and, you know, uh, Cassian Elvis, you know, uh, which he has produced like 100 movies uh, and he was helping me at that time. That That helped me a lot. And, you know, uh, everybody told me you cannot go to supporting actors, uh, to, to the stars, starring, you know, just like uh, before you have the lead. So I was trying really just cast the lead because, you know, they said, you know, if you if you want to get Michael Caine, he's going to ask you, uh, who's the lead? You know, and he's not going to tell you, you know, that he's doing it before. So one, once Ben Foster said, you know, I'm doing it, I said, hey, we have to try Michael Caine. And Cassian said, no, 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 come on. I've done 100 movies, and my dream was to do a movie with Michael Caine. And I said, no, 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 no. I wrote it for Michael Caine. I have to give it to him. And I get to hear no. But I just like give it, got to give it to him. So we gave it to him, and I was at my cottage, which is like, you know, 100 kilometers from Prague. And suddenly somebody was calling, and it was unknown number. And I answered it, and he said, hello, it's Michael Caine here, and you've got lovely script, and I, I'm looking forward to work with you. And I was like, I, 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 couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't say anything. I was just like, I, I, what I should say. And he said, okay, so see you in Prague. And, um, and then I, I went down, I told it to my family, and we were like, ah, shouting like crazy. So I wrote it to to Cassian and he immediately wrote me back and I opened it and there was a picture of Cassian when he was 13 with Michael Caine and he wrote because they, they, he's from Britain you know from UK and he wrote me it took me 50 years to make this happen you know make my dream come through and i would never imagine that it would be with you with a guy from eastern europe you know <laughs> so it was like pretty amazing and michael was absolutely absolutely amazing uh, amazing guy who you know supported me throughout the whole shooting and during the shooting we also agreed about uh, you know doing another movie and i produced with him another movie called bestsellers with aubrey plaza it's a drama uh, and you know we shot it in canada it's out already last year and uh, yeah and and he is also uh, starring in a video game which is you know for medieval so we are making a video game and he has his own 3d character there which is <laughs> pretty insane that's and crazy. we are using the, the the film, and we're gonna recut it, re-edit it, you know, and we're gonna combine it with the video game. So you're gonna be playing, uh, you know, the story of the movie, and you're gonna find out about different motivations of people, you know, of you know, like you know, just like of the characters, and you're gonna, you know, do some quests about, you know, you're gonna find out a bit more about about history of you know, you know, Hasides and and That's Jishka. <laughs> so so once you had. Once you had your cast in place, what kind of what kind of prep did you do? Because you know this is not something that they're as well versed in as you are. Uh, but prep and rehearsal, like how 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 much did you have? You know, it's a luxury to have enough time to do that. So how much time did you have to do that? Uh, 
I always wanted to rehearse a lot. And I, I just like, I was ready for that, but I didn't have actors. And I just like, I couldn't find them, you know. I just like, and I, I was still waiting. It was like two months before shooting and I, I still had nobody. It was like one and a half months, you know, and I, I, and everything was going like, we were making weapons, you know, uh, like one and a half million was already spent, you know, and uh, ev everybody, costume designers, everybody was asking me, was his si what was the size of the actor Frzyszka? And I said, uh, okay, uh, I couldn't tell them that I don't have him yet. I said like we are almost there, and I said like some something some yeah so, some like you know yeah he's five seven or six five whatever, <laughs> and he was like oh my god so like so they started to work on it you know then of course they had to change everything because we had different sizes and but it was like you know uh suddenly when we uh, when we got you know ben foster on board and then later on michael kane everybody wanted to be in the movie with michael kane and also ben foster you know he was just also you know uh he he was really well respected by the other actors and so i brought you know ben foster to prague and we had one week of rehearsals you know and we were going through the script and we were just cutting lines you know or saying it differently i was also rewriting and that was good advantage big advantage for me that i was rewriting it you know with him in a room so it was great and also later on you know uh, like when you know i was actually hiring matthew good uh, later on when we were shooting uh, and you know he asked me okay I just like you know I, I, I really like the script but uh, I do it just like you know could I have a you know scene with Michael and I said of course you know I'm gonna <laughs> so I did that but what was very difficult you know I wrote that scene uh, Afterwards, you know, just like when the script was finished, and I said, "Okay, this is great." You know, I'm, I'm, you know, doing nice scene for him, and I did great scene, like you know, four pages, and then we shot it. It was great. You know, it was just like I was like, "Oh my god, this is awesome! This scene will be perfect." When we, when I cut it, I put it there, so you were watching, you know, the movie, and suddenly, oh, five minutes of like, hoo -hoo. I was, and it's just like it, it couldn't be there as I shot it, you know? So I, I was trying to find different places, you know, for, for the scene. I was, I was doing different edits of it, you know? But at the end of the day, I got it there and it's much later than it, it's supposed to be in the beginning, it's at the end. And, you know, he just goes there and says, like, you know, why did you do that, you know? And, you know, they have short conversation, but it's there. It's there and it helps the movie, you know, just like you to, to understand the, the story. What What is it like working with Ben Foster? Uh, it's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult. That's why I asked. <laughs> it is. It is very difficult. It's, uh, you know, just like, honestly, he was the nicest man when we met for the first time and we were discussing everything. It was absolutely a dream for me, really like a dream. And we were going through everything. And uh, yeah, but once it started, you know, when we started shooting, he became to be different, you know, and we, he was like, you know, like, like somewhere deep inside of him, just like, you know, probably thinking, you know, focus on the character and, tr you know, discussing everything and just like, why, why, why this, that, ah, and it was just like, it was very difficult to find a way how to, you know, manage him, just like how to explain him what, what I want and why I want it, you know. And he also didn't want, you know, me to, to tell him any notes first two takes, you know, I just like nothing and just like, and then and I was trying to explain him, hey, of course, you know, uh, you know, we we talked about it, how to do it. But if you do the first take wrong, you know, and you, you are absolutely somewhere else when I don't need you, I need you. I got to tell, tell this to you. It's just like it was like because this next take, it costs money, you know, and we didn't have enough time. So it was like, you know, just like I, I try to, you know, 
explain it to him, not to hurt him, you know, just like uh, like his concentration and everything. Uh, but yeah, I found a way. How just like you know how to how to do it. But uh, he was definitely you know the the most difficult you know from the um, you know the. He's very he's very into himself. Uh, I mean, in, in a in an actually way, which which you know some people do that. They get very method. They get you know consumed. They stay in character. And and then there are people like Michael Caine, who are who are I guess a little different. He, you know, just Michael, uh, I, I just like, when Michael said yes, I was like, oh my God, how I'm going to direct, you know, somebody like Michael Caine. He's just like, it's insane. And he told me like, Peter, I chose you, I trust you, whatever you tell me, I'm going to do it. And he never asked me one question, not even one question. He never s said, why, why am I, am I going there? No, no. He said like, he did what I told him, and then he said, uh, do you want something else? And I said, maybe you could try this. And he did that, exactly. So it was like, it was unbelievable. It was, it was you know, just really uh, extreme experience, you know, for me, and how humble he is. And, you know, uh, and he's a he was 84, 85 almost, you know. And he remembered, like, you know, he had, like, sometimes three pages, you know, of text. And he had two or three scenes like this during the day. I, I, I just, like, I absolutely didn't get it, you know. And, wow. and he was, like, yeah, I was trying to do everything with him in the morning because he was, like, he was fresh, you know. And, of course, you know, during the day, you know, you, he got tired. But... Still, it was you know Michael Caine, and uh, it was like uh, long. He didn't shoot for a long time before some you know I don't know how how many years, maybe two. So he was also nervous in the beginning, you know, and uh, how it's gonna be, how it's you just like. Uh, so so it was you know it was it was great experience, you know. There was like and, and he was so supportive. He always whatever problem I had, he said, no, "Don't worry, don't worry, it's gonna be fine." It's just like. He was he was he was helping me a lot, you know. So, um, and as well as the other actors, you know, just like everybody supported me, and that's why I survived it because it was like very difficult to shoot, you know, and just like it was it was really brutal. What was there a scene or maybe a couple scenes that really stood out to you as being like the most difficult part of the shoot? Uh, yeah, and I, now I know why because you know just like. I rewrote this scene like 50 times in the script. <laughs> and I know it's going to be like, and now it's, yeah, I have to find the way how to do it. And, and there was the scene when uh, Ben Foster Zizka walks into, uh, you know, Rebels Village. And, you know, they talk, I mean, Rebels Camp. And they talk about it. And, you know, because you have to deliver a lot of information. And suddenly it feels like, you know, exposition, you know. And I was like, how to do this? You know, like they were asking for money, not asking for money, why they are there, you know, so many, too many information. And that scene was much longer. It, it used to be much longer. And then I started shooting it, you know, and suddenly I felt like, oh my God, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Then I finished it, you know, and I was kind of satisfied. And then I re-edited it like 50 times again. And it's just like, it's a nightmare and it's there. It's, you know, I think it's fine. But, you know, the process with this scene was uh, insane. And it's just like, and that's, that's, you know, just like good to know. And remember, once something doesn't work in a script, you should re usually get rid of it, change it or something. Otherwise, you're going to have a big problem with that later on. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. It's really true. The, uh, the battle scenes uh, must have been challenging, but because you are coming from a background of being a stuntman, and like, how do you think that, that being a stuntman, being an actor, makes you also a better director? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just like, you know, uh, I always do everything. Just like I, I didn't go to film school. Uh, I just, I've been you know in film business since 1992 when my fa father set up you know a production company and i was there and i was with uh, i was you know like uh, uh, i was doing 
stunt work as as a hobby and so i was there i was just like i saw everything and i i was enjoying it it was fun and then i decided like you know just like to to write something just for myself you know and uh i started to produce movies uh and then i was writing a script for my first feature which was in 2010 and uh we couldn't find a director and i i, just, I was just like pitching it you know and talking to the directors all the time you know and then one of them said okay but you should do it you know you know how just like what you want so i said okay uh yeah i would do it you know my partners they said yeah yeah we trust you so do it and uh and why i'm saying this you know i do everything just like you know whatever is my instinct says i do that i hire actors according to instincts you know i i just like i i see their personality if it if the chemistry with me works i i hire them you know if not i don't want to work with people i feel like you know it's not gonna work and you know it's not only about acting you know sometimes i also chose you know a little bit uh uh worse actress you know like in a way they are they were still really good but i i had two choices you know and uh i was just imagining how working with this guy would be and with this you know i said like no 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 i think i can you know just like push him to be better at the end than the other guy because the other guy wouldn't listen and I, I felt it, you know, somehow. So I, 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 I hire people, you know, according to this, you know. So uh, always, like, you know, when you do any audition, just like try to be nice. <laughs> it helps. It helps. Yeah, I mean, it helps. Everyone in this room will appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it is. Uh, so, so you shot the film, you know, a little over fifty days. When? What year? And and I and and. What year did you fit make this? Yeah, it was 2018, 17th September, and we were shooting till the 3rd of uh, December. So we started in a very hot weather and we ended with almost snow. And uh, yeah, and then we just post produced it for two years, almost two years, and we were ready to distribute it two years ago. And but on the other end, you know, I just like, I was really angry that it couldn't be distributed, you know, that, you know, two years ago. But uh, uh, right now I'm super happy that it, it didn't happen because uh, the war in Ukraine is very close to us, you know. And uh, I my movie before this one, you know, I shot in 2012 in Ukraine. I had a lot of friends there. Uh, and I brought actresses, you know, who were acting in the other movie uh, from Kiev, which was bombed, you know, at that time, you know, to Prague, you know, and we were helping, you know, uh, everybody who came from Ukraine. And we suddenly felt like, oh, my God, this is like, this is unbelievable what is happening. And then I was watching the movie and I was like, oh, my God, this was, you know, something similar of whatever was happening before 600 years ago. It was happening 100 years ago. And it's probably, unfortunately, going to be happening in the future, too. And uh, the movie for me was always about fighting for freedom and about faith. The faith is very important for me in my life. And I just was very happy, you know, that the movie was not shown yet. And I added that last sentence, like, devoted for to people who fight for freedom. Because I felt like, you know, that's something which is just like, you know, for me, you know, the message I wanted to say, like, you know, that if you see something what is not right and you are not happy with that, you should do something. I don't mean like you should kill somebody, <laughs> but <laughs> you should say something or, you know, just uh, do, do something about it. And it's just about, you know, each one of us, you know, so we can change that. And not to wait that, you know, if somebody else is doing it, you know, I'm going to go with them. Just like start with ourselves, you know. So that's just like why I, I'm happy that it was not distributed yet. Well, uh, yes. Very nice. So we have a question from Lucas. Lucas, uh, his question is for you, Peter, of course. And his question is, when did you start acting and why did you transition to producing and directing? 
uh that was actually like you know uh when it was 1999 no 2000 actually i i did i got some little parts before like a stunt man because i i'm six seven and i i it used to be bigger and you know just like i was a judo guy i would, i could fight so i was i was i got some small parts in czech movies and then some big productions like triple x you know bad company with anthony hopkins alien versus predator euro trip came to prague and it was a great chance for me because i would i wouldn't probably get the job here because it's like so many actors you know for one role you know but it was different there because you know they came to prague and they wanted to cast some parts you know and because i'm big you know and those were usually russian killers or uh, <laughs> and i was always killed you know at the end of the day uh, only what i survived was euro trip because i was just a dream in the movie oh that's right <laughs> otherwise i would be probably killed too and uh, so it was like you know uh, it was fun for me and I got pretty big part in triple X it was like eighth part in the movie you know I had blonde hair you know he was like cut cut my throat and my line in the movie like you know which was like the you know uh, I was uh, uh, shouting at girls you know at a party I was like bitches come <laughs> and that was the line which Vin Diesel was saying in the movie and he came to me and said, Peter, now you have to say it exactly as I do. And he told me, bitch is gum. I said, okay, I'm going to do it. So action, I did it. I said that and Rob Cohen came to me. Who told you this? You know, why, why, why are you doing this? I said, I mean, Vin told me that I should do it this way. No, you got to do it. And he told me how I should do it. You know, so I did it. Vin came to me. Peter, why did you do this? You know, you're just like, a, I said, hey guys, you have to, they had big argument about how I should say the line. But every morning after this, you know, we were like, morning greetings were like, bitches come. <laughs> they made t-shirts. I came here for the premiere, which was like in 2000, I don't know, two. And because it was, and, Triple X was all over the place, just like, you know, it was everywhere. They wanted to make a star from Vin Diesel. And uh, it, I just like, you know, after the first weekend, I was walking on a street and I had blonde hair. And I, I was here with uh, another guy who was, you know, was one of the main villain, you know, a sniper. And he was bald and we were walking together. And suddenly some people, could I take a, make a picture with you? And I was like... What the fuck? It was unbelievable for me. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, because we were so recognizable. And, you know, so we enjoyed here like three months. We were going to every party. We were invited. I had never paid anything. I had no money at that time. But I didn't need them. And they were just like saying, yeah, this is great. How you, your, your accent and everything. And then I started to speak and say, oh, this is not your accent, <laughs> this is really, so I was like, I had really, really strong accent at that time, you know, much stronger than now, and I, it's just like, it was like, uh, it, it, it was super fun, and, and uh, when I was invited to a premiere, uh, they had a surprise for me, and Vin Diesel and Robko and a director of it, you know, they came to me and said, hey, Peter, go on a stage, it was a huge, it was somewhere, uh, you know, on a stadium here, you know, I just like tri those triple X's, you know, uh, beams, you know, on the... Uh, Sonny so had a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> and they said, like, go on a stage. And there was a Harley Davidson bike, you know, and I was, uh, they said, like, sit on it, you know, and I, I sat on it and, and there was a big screen in front of me. And uh, he said, like, just like start, you know, the bike. And I started the bike. And suddenly, me was walking towards me on the screen, and I like, just like a character, like, you know, and he, he was getting on the bike, and suddenly I was playing a game which was created like with my character. And I was like, oh my God. And then I said, okay, I'm gonna get some money. <laughs> that, that's another, it's just like, I've got my game, it's just like, 
And then uh, my lawyer said, no, 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 no. You gave them all the rights for free yeah, with your agreement because I was not SAG member and anything because it didn't make sense for me in Prague and just... So I gave them all the rights, but I was so happy that I had my own video game. And it was all, it was in, you know, all over the world, there were these motorbikes, you know, in pubs with small screens, you know, and you could play these games. And there were three games. One was The Sniper, one was Vin Diesel, you know, doing all these things, and this one was the third one. So it was like, you know, for me, it was absolutely unbelievable, and I was super lucky with that. So... And that was about the the acting, you know. So I got I got some very small parts in other movies, and I was here. And I uh, they told me if I wanna continue with acting, you know, I would have to live here. And you know, I I just like I'm big patriot. I've got my family there in Prague, so I couldn't stay here. So I came back and I started to produce. It was in 2003. And I, uh, yeah, and I got some very, you know, small parts later on. I, you know, just like I liked it, you know, but I know I knew I was not really good with that, you know, like, not really good actor. So it's just like I was more like a type. <laughs> so, so in in terms of like directing, uh, your this is your third feature as a director. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel that that you have evolved as a director? And what did you take away from making Medieval? I mean, uh, just like I was, like when I did my first movie, it was in 2010. It was a movie about uh, the most famous Czech prisoner. It's also based on true story. And he escaped from a prison like Alcatraz. And uh, we felt, you know, I felt he's innocent, you know. So yeah, I started to study his case and everything. Uh, he was, you know, sentenced for life, you know, and so I, I just like learned about every all the details. I was talking to everybody, uh, and then I made the movie, and actually now he got presidential pardon, you know, and it was partially also because of the movie, because the the movie w w had the highest box office, like top ten in 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 my country, you know, you know, ten years ago. But uh, he got really presidential pardon, so that was my first movie, and I, I just like you know suddenly uh, felt like you know that's something what I really like to be behind the camera and, and give orders. That's much easier than act, you know. <laughs> so, but because I always like you know when I rehearse with my actors, you know. I act with them. I do it because, and it helps me. And I actually became better actor <laughs> because of this, you know, rehearsals and all that, you know. So I feel much more comfortable now than before. And uh, because I know what is just like, you know, the other side, what I should be. And that's basically, you know, something what I did, you know, and then I, I did, uh, you know, a horror movie uh, uh, 2015, uh, which, you know, uh, it was found footage. And I, I shot it in 2011 when found footage was really like everybody wanted to watch found footage. In 2015, nobody wanted to watch found footage. I was like, oh my God. And I did it in 3D, which was perfect in 2011, 15. Oh my God. Found footage 3D. So. Yeah, and it was like something like Blair Witch, you know, but it was uh, also another, again, in my country, it was the highest grossing horror ever. Yeah, so it's just like, it was it was scary. It was very dirty, you know, just like very dirty. I, I wanted it this way. It was about a cannibal, uh, like Chikatilo. He, he comes from, he's a Russian, you know, a cannibal, like, you know, he killed like 52 people. Crazy guy. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, that was just like I've learned a lot because I was also, you know, it was a very low budget and, and I shot it in English. And uh, because I wanted to see if I can direct in English, you know, it's something different, you know, you have to give orders, people have to understand what you want. So I actually, like, you know, did that. And because, and on, uh, and I showed it here to Rob Cohen. Because he, he said, like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm working on this, you know, just like a little horror movie. And he said, like, do you have something? And I uh, we were at a lunch, you know, uh, somewhere here in a restaurant. And he said, okay, show it to me. And I showed it to him. And he said, oh, my God, you scared me. 
I want to watch it. And he just he called from the table. He called Jason Blum. Yeah, and he says just like, "Hey, Jason, you have to you have to watch this, you know, with me." So I ordered, you know, I hired, I book a screen, you know, here like a screening room, and they went there and they watched the movie, and they both were like, "Oh my God, we love it!" You know, just like let's do it. But then it was 2012. But then they were saying all the time like, "You have to change this. You have to change that." And it took me three years. And it was basically like you know, and and I couldn't get it. I couldn't satisfy the audience, you know, because it was like you know, we wouldn't recommend this movie. Why? It's too yeah, like you've got too bad feelings, you know. After that, and you just like you, know, oh, it's a horror, you know. Just like you, it's dirty, it's ugly. I know, but I cannot change it, change that, you know. So I couldn't, I couldn't get there, just like to the big distribution. But then I sold the movie, like you know, to the most of the world, you know. So it was fine. But uh, yeah, it was big, big, you know, big, you know, experience. And then I did, you know, Medieval, and uh, that was the toughest one. Absolutely uh, different game, uh, you know, just like big production. And I, I wasn't ready for many things, but because of sport, you know, I've been training. I, I, I was, you know, just like I, uh, I used to train a lot, and you know, I was ready for many things. But then I, there were days, you know, when I felt like, you know, I cannot finish this, you know, because it's just like too much, you know. I'm doing this, this, that, and we don't have this, and everything is, you know, falling apart. But. Uh, my wife always told me like everything what is happening and what is wrong is good for you and i said oh my god how you can tell me this right now when i don't have a crane which i absolutely need i said you'll see you'll see it's gonna be good and you know and then i started you know just like to think about it okay i cannot do anything i cannot change that so let's try to use it and th think about it differently and for example, there's a scene in the middle with a with that wagon, you know, just like going, you know, in a pass, you know, they are planning to be there and fight uh, the bad guys. And they showed me uh, the choreography and it was horrible. It was horrible because they didn't have actors, they couldn't train, they couldn't prepare it. And I was like, oh my God, I cannot do this, This it, it's impossible. So I, I thought like, you know, what can I do? And I created, the hay, fire, water, and smoke. And because of that, it looks much better. And I could never, you know, do this. And there's a lot of examples like this, actually. Sure, absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now that you've seen Medieval, please spread the word. Thank you for being here in person. SAG After Foundation Conversation. Peter Jackal, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, too. Thank you.